Hi, welcome to Balanced Health. I'm Shirley Rose and this is Joe Costello. You know, we've all heard that we should get eight hours of sleep, but is that really important? With hectic schedules and so much to do, many of us get six hours a night or less. By doing so, are we putting ourselves at risk? Well, today's show is about the health benefits of getting proper sleep. And to guide us through this topic, Dr. Andrew Mouton has joined us in the studio. Dr. Mouton is a licensed clinical psychologist and board certified sleep specialist. He practices in Illinois at the Center for Sleep Medicine. Welcome, Dr. Mouton. I'm so glad you joined us today. Mm, thank you for having me. And Welcome this is a, it's a, it's a subject that's very important to me because number one, I struggle with sleep sometimes. And number two, my husband has sleep apnea, which we're gonna be talking about later. So, but it is a very critical subject. You know, we hear so often about, especially now, you know, getting more sleep is better. Um, but we find out that Americans just don't. Um, maybe coming from a doctor's mouth will pay more attention. Be more <laughs> specific. What, what, are, what are some of the health benefits that you see people uh, experience once, we're gonna kind of start at the end here, once you've gotten them to sleep well? What, what, what changes do you see in their life? Well, I, I think of it as, as sleep as being critical for just about every aspect of our functioning during the day. And it's hard to imagine some aspect of our lives that isn't influenced by sleep. Uh, on the behavioral side, sleep is critical for the uh, functioning of our cognitive abilities, memory, attention, concentration. Uh, it's essential even for our personalities to function the way they should. Uh, well, you know, I often, not often, but I have on occasion, and just recently because I was traveling and I got like three hours of sleep the night before, and it was like I was noticing the next day, I, I couldn't, you know, like make decisions quickly or Absolutely. I couldn't remember what I was doing and you know and I'm always thinking okay it's Alzheimer's or it's my age <laughs> but then I realized I'm work I'm working on three hours sleep here there's, and so I really can tell the difference. Very clear evidence that sleep deprivation impairs a number of our cognitive abilities including memory and concentration and reasoning and decision making all of those things. Right there I'll, I'll interrupt you because you use the <clears throat> word deprivation Mm -hmm. So to John Q. Public, that means, you know, partying for seven days in a row or, or pulling an all-nighter at school to study. And, that, and, and, and recently I saw something on 60 Minutes, you probably have seen this a hundred times, where they had all these students and they did this test. They took them from eight and a half hours and then like showed them flashcards, nine times seven. It was more mm -hmm. complicated okay. than that, but yeah. used to keep it. And then they went to eight, then they went to seven and a half, then they went to... Oh, really? And they're, Cognitive score just declined. went down. Yes. And it went down, again, using the word deprivation here, we want to redefine it a little bit because they, there was a significant cognitive impairment going from eight and a half just to seven. Yes. And then oh, from really? seven, and then from seven to six, and from, so oh. from like seven to five, there were basket cases. Th think how smart right. I could be if I really <laughs> got too, eight or nine years. hours. I, I spent the whole time out. So it's really not deprivation in the way that most people think of it, right? Well. Chronic sleep deprivation can occur with as little as 30 minutes uh, less sleep than we need each night. You're kidding. One of the things that, that we've learned about sleep deprivation that's critical to understanding the effects uh, of sleep deprivation is that uh, the impairment or the, the effect of the sleep deprivation is cumulative over time. Mm. So someone who needs eight hours of sleep, as that study showed, but gets seven and a half, uh, will be impaired very soon. But if they continue on the seven and a half hour schedule, the amount of deprivation builds over time and the, and the impairment becomes much greater. Now so you said the person who needs eight hours, mm -hmm. then so by that are you saying that really some people do need more than other people? Absolutely, absolutely. And getting as little as 30 minutes less than what you need may constitute a state of chronic low level sleep deprivation which wow. can significantly impair our daytime functioning. So. Well, my, myself and my, some members of my family anyway have always had a kind of a history of being high stress, high anxiety people. Um, we write that off to being perfectionists <laughs> and achievers, but the reality is we're stress and anxiety people. And uh, so many years ago I suffered from chronic fatigue syndrome, whatever you want to call it. Went through that whole cycle and here I am 20 years later and, and, and Shirley and Dr. Mouton, if I don't get my sleep, I just simply cannot function. And I know, I've gotten to know my body so well. For instance, I get up usually at five or 5.30 in the morning, I make my son breakfast, because I'm big on nutritious breakfast. Some days, when he, when he leaves, I'm fine. 
I can just feel it in my body. I'm mm -hmm. fine. Some days I'm enough. like, no, I've got to go lay back down. And there are times where that extra 30 or 45 minutes will make a complete difference in my entire demeanor. Wow. Not to mention my productivity and that's so, Absolutely. So finding so we do need different levels, but finding that level is something people might have to kind of work at a little bit and, and, and make it a priority, right? So, yes. And how do you determine how much you need? Well, that's a good question. You you need as much sleep as it takes to be rested and refreshed throughout the day. Now that said, for for most adults, that number is somewhere around eight hours. Uh, there are individual differences. Some people sleep a little longer, some people are a little shorter. Uh, I think there's a, a tendency in our society to think that we actually need less. So what I see is patients who come in and say, oh, no, I sleep five and a half, six hours, and I do just fine. But then when you ask about caffeine consumption, you find mm -hmm. out that they have eight cups of coffee during the day and have had three motor vehicle accidents in the last year. So Oops. <laughs> it, yeah, that's not a good thing. Most of us probably need more than what we may think. Well, and on that note, if we quantify this a little bit, being horizontal for eight hours is one thing. How much of that is sleep and quality sleep? It can be entirely another, right? Absolutely, absolutely. There's a clear difference between how much time we spend in bed and how much time we're actually asleep. And then, of course, the, the quality is a big <clears throat> issue. There, there are lots of folks who can sleep relatively uh, normal amounts of time, but because of the presence of sleep disorders, like your husband's sleep apnea, may wake up completely exhausted mm. and be profoundly sleepy throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So quantity of sleep is an issue, but so is the quality of the sleep. So if someone snores and has sleep apnea, it doesn't really matter how much they sleep. Mm. They're gonna be impaired. And I mentioned a minute ago, you know, uh, at my age, as you get older, I've heard people say, as I, the, the big difference in being past 50 is you don't need as much sleep. And I've heard people say, the big difference in that's being a, my age is you need more sleep. So. Huge <laughs> I'm waiting so, for that don't need yeah, as much sleep thing. Right. That, that no, no, seem no. To be coming from does it here. seem no. to change as you age? Actually, the, our need for sleep does not decrease with age. That's a, a long-standing myth that yeah. we hear often. Um, what happens, unfortunately, when we get older is that we become much more susceptible to any number of sleep disorders. For example, oh. insomnia becomes very, very common as we age. Okay. Uh, sleep apnea increases with age. Uh, the frequency of movement disorders in sleep increases with age. So I think uh, the way to really describe it, when we get older, it becomes harder to get the sleep we need. It doesn't mean that we, we don't need, need the same amount. Good idea. And well, probably, uh, that's probably why that we have to nap more as we get older. But anyway, we'll talk about that in a minute. We're having a great discussion here, but it's time for a quick break. When we return, we'll ask whether caffeine helps you overcome the lack of sleep. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Balanced Health.